The conversion is 99% complete. It's mostly down to just plastics now. I left that off to show you what I've been up to. There's that Volvo electric power steering pump. I wired the control wire, which is just that one there that you need, up to the ignition on position. It's your windshield washer bottle. There's enough clearance there. I made some brackets to support it. It's incredibly sturdy. Only moves on its own rubber mounts. Had to get a custom made power steering line for the high pressure under there. It's uh, partly metal and partly high pressure rubber hose. I ran this to the circuit where the electrical power steering was before on the Volkswagen. So it's got a special place in the fuse relay box for it to connect to with the proper size fusing. Ha, ah, just tricking you. Who needs that shit? There she is. She looks factory. Still have to deal with these extra wires that ran the motor and transmission on that 3.6. But everything fit perfect. It's ready for a maiden voyage. This is my clutch fluid bottle <laughs> for the uh, master cylinder. I went to the wreckers looking for like the old style cars that had a separate bottle that wasn't connected to the brake fluid and I couldn't find any so that's a temporary solution. Now a little trick I have to teach you guys about. When you undo the bleeder that's down there on the slave cylinder for the clutch just pull the little yellow cork right out and get yourself a squeezy bottle and put your dot four fluid in there and reverse bleed it. This bottle has a little vent hole in it so this bottle was already hooked up. You just put that upside down and squeeze it hard and it forces the fluid up this way and that's 100% necessary to get all the air out because I showed you before that I have a little copper brass coupler in there which is 5 16 and if you don't push the air out backwards Bubbles will pool in that wider line and never be able to force force to be pushed out the bottom the conventional way to bleed Now in here I have all my wires tucked away now The two fuse boxes are up there They're tied up with some sort of heavy-duty string so if I need to bring them down I just untie them and hang them down I put this little switch here, which is just going to go on the kick plate when I'm done. And that's just so I can shut the power steering off or on. I don't, if I'm just driving down the highway and never using major curves or anything, it makes, it's going to make my Volvo pump last longer. I attached the VW ignition switch and I welded it onto the steering column. At the moment, it's going to be a dual key vehicle one key to start it up and drive it and another key to make everything work inside later on I'll put a relay in the system so that when you turn on the Volkswagen key the other key will be in on position all the time and the relay will just send power to the input of that key system and turn it on at the same time as you start it with the VW key since I mounted that there I had to modify the lower cover now it fits perfectly. I left it off so I can show you before I screw it back on. I extended the wires to the VW instrument cluster because it's part of the security immobilizer system. For the time being, since that system is functioning, I have to have that in there. And for my maiden voyage, which I'm about to do, I'd like to see what's actually going on. And so, anyways, I've got a passenger with me. Passenger full of information. It's in neutral. Let's uh, put a key in this thing. See what's going to happen. I'm going to push the clutch now. Amazing. Is it ever quiet? In neutral, I can get out. I put this key in, everything lights up here, and I bet you the speedometer works because it reads it off the ABS system just the way Volkswagen does. 
but it doesn't have the Volkswagen EBS sensors hooked up now, so that speedometer won't work. It's quiet as a VW. Now I'll we'll turn that thing on and you can listen to it. Hopefully you can't hear it when you're driving. So now the steering is very tight. Let's switch this thing on. Two and a half second delay. Now the steering works very easy, just using a couple fingers. Nice power steering. And I can do this without even the car running. Just turn the key on. Just gotta put plastics back together and she's done. Let's get this piece of shit out of the way for our maiden voyage. So you can only hear it when you get right up to it. This is it. My birthday is tomorrow, so let's hope I get lucky. Here we go. It's alive! <laughs> Amazing. Uh, that's just telling me something's wrong, but I already know that. It's me. <laughs> well, it's quite dorky. It turns on power on quicker than it does it did when it was had the 3.6 liter. Better shift. Feels like a masterpiece. No vibrations or weird noises. Everything's ergonomically correct like it's was supposed to be in this vehicle. It actually feels like it was factory made this way and I'm sure you noticed it looks like it was factory made this way. Whatever this piece of shit is for. There, there's the speedometer working. Seatbelt light works. Cool. I love it. Maybe I'll work out in the sunshine now and put these plastics on. Let's try reverse. Power steering feels completely normal. Excellent. It goes in reverse too. Cool. Took longer than I expected. I love it. I'll shut up that power steering pump just for fun. I also built some air dams around the radiator, or the three radiators, or two radiators and an intercooler, I mean. Uh, low pressure power steering line becomes a cooler line when it runs across there. I've got two air conditioning lines that need slightly modified that do the air conditioning. I love it. Now back to work with that plastic.